beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers Jesus, even while this in your life now that even when it is physical rainy season that we it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise us, i declare and declare we let the rain begin to fall we with god and then we can do this through prayer through the word of god and even as we are about listening to that so i want us to do something we are going to like this video so then please hit on the like button if you have not done so this helps youtube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed the bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of god then it says now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like in other words just because you have not yet evolved in experience to become that instrument of glory it does not mean the word of god lied let god be true and every man including every situation be a liar do you believe that so settle it once and for all dear people of god that you and i have been called preordained to a life of glory and a life of excellence ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 the bible says for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus are we together now yes we are created unto good works which god had for ordained before ordained that we should walk in them in other words God is not scratching his head wondering what to make out of your life. That there is a script that has been written as far as your glory and your excelling is concerned. Now, whether you walk in that reality or not is another discussion. But settle it for a fact that God has called you and I to a life of glory, you and I to a life of excellence. Are we together now? The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod, the Greek is doxa. The word glory simply is an attempt to describe the value or the worth of a person or a thing. It was an ancient way of measuring wealth. Um, in, in ancient times, they used gold and metals to measure wealth. So the weightiness, the weightier the metal, the more valuable it was. So the word doxa or kabod literally means the weightiness of god it is a summation of everything that makes god god his wisdom his goodness his power his grace his favor so when we say the believer should be a manifestation of the glory of god it means that your life should be and remain a living epistle that people can look at your life and learn god you become a continuation of their bible study when they look at you are we together that your life is literally scripture in motion if they do not know what favor looks like god can refer them to your life that by looking at your life they will understand what it means to be favored of god if they do not understand the manifold wisdom of god like ephesians 3 and verse 10 says it says now to the intents that now unto principalities and powers but might be made known by the church the multifaceted wisdom of god in other words if men and women are in doubt as to how wise one who is under the influence of god can be he can refer them to your life the excellency of the wisdom that emanates from your life becomes a testament that you are a manifesto of the glory of god are we together now the purpose of glory 
the purpose of glory is to magnify listen carefully the purpose of glory is to show the excellency of the 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 object or the creativity behind that glory say for instance the glory of this phone is in exploring all the vast features that are in the phone are we together its ability to browse its ability to be fast and so on and so forth the glory of a vehicle is to be able to explore all the features are, that are there so the glory of god to understand the glory of god you will need to study the character of god one by one his wisdom his goodness his favor then when you are exhausted you can now understand the vast nature of his glory and the bible says every believer has a divine mandate to be a representation of a dimension of god's glory hallelujah and then number two we established yesterday that as true as the aforementioned statement is that you do not just step in arbitrarily into glory walking in the experience of a glorious life demands that you follow a predefined pathway please listen it is not enough to confess or to know or to rejoice over the fact that the destiny of glory has been apportioned for you and i you must understand the pathway that leads to glory for the bible declares that there is a way that cement right unto a man are we still together it says but the end thereof are the ways of death the ways of destruction there is a predefined pathway that when you walk in keeping with you will naturally evolve into a glorious vessel and i did tell us yesterday we discussed a few things i'm just doing a quick recap so i'll take it from there that the first pathway for anyone who wants to walk in glory you must encounter the son of the living god are we together now yes in the experience that we call salvation or new birth now as basic as this is you ignore it and there is no potential for glory for any student to become a bona fide student of any college you must be admitted into that institution am i right on that so you are issued what we call an admission letter but receiving an admission letter does not turn you automatically into a doctor or an engineer it only tells you that now you are in a position where you sustain the potential to eventually evolve am i right on that so it is possible to have the admission letter and yet not attend lectures it is possible to have the admission letter and yet not even study it is possible to have admission letter and to fail your exams the admission letter is valid but you will never be certified as a doctor or an engineer or whatever it is you are pursuing am i right on that so salvation becomes your admission into the kingdom in john chapter 3 our discussion begins from verse 1 nicodemus comes to jesus by night and he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god verse 2 says for no man can do these miracles except god be with him jesus now replies and says verily verily i say unto you except ye be born again you cannot see the kingdom he says and nicodemus says shall i at this age enter into my mother's womb a second time and then he says in verse 5 except ye be born of water and of the spirit you cannot enter the kingdom of god are we together he says that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit so it is important that you encounter jesus the son of the living god now when you encounter jesus the son of the living god you are exposed to certain ministries that you must submit yourself to number one the ministry of the holy spirit I wish I had all the time we could spend a whole day discussing on the Holy Spirit because Jesus himself introduced the Holy Spirit to the disciples. He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says that he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the word. The Holy Spirit is the confirmer of the word. Now, 
the Holy Spirit essentially has a threefold assignment. Please listen carefully. I just listed all of the principles yesterday, but now I just want to buttress on them a bit. So let's talk a bit about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Bible calls him God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not one of the spirits in heaven. In fact, he is the first dimension of the Godhead revealed in Scripture. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. And then it says, And the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters that means every time there is darkness and chaos in your life he is that dimension of the godhead that is released to your life the moment you see the holy spirit comes he is a master at turning darkness to light he is the is a master at managing chaos hallelujah jesus himself even though the word incarnate jesus could not do anything on earth until the holy spirit came upon him the bible tells us that for 30 years he lived an ordinary life and then he comes to john to be baptized and having been baptized of john the bible says he came out of the waters and the heavens were opened and the holy spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove and there was a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son are we together then the holy spirit drove him into the wilderness he prayed and fasted was tempted of the devil then the bible says he returned in the power of the holy spirit and the exploits in his ministry begun acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power it says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him now listen the holy spirit has a threefold ministry can we do a quick crash course on the holy spirit he has a threefold ministry number one the first dimension of his ministry is to creation the holy spirit has a ministry to the entire creation he is the life force behind creation you would think that life works just because of the sun and the moon and the stars and water life works as we know it simply because the holy ghost is still in motion in the earth we draw the holy spirit and leave every other element in place we will still die the Holy Spirit is the life of God. Are we together? So his ministry is not just to men. Plants and animals and every element of creation depends on the Holy Spirit for survival. This is powerful. When there was darkness and chaos, before God said, let there be light, he was. And he still remains upon the earth. So the Holy Spirit has a ministry to creation. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. The second dimension of his ministry is to unbelievers. What is his ministry to unbelievers? The Bible says that he will reprove the world. You find that in John chapter 16, that he will reprove the world of three things. Number one, of sin number two of righteousness and number three of judgment that means every unbeliever enjoys that ministry the convicting power of the holy spirit that whilst the word is coming as you are hearing me teach or under the influence of our father's teaching the holy ghost is walking upon the hearts of they that have not experienced the life of god this is the reason why after the discussion and the preaching when an altar call is made someone is able to leave his seat and come out i hope you know that no man can be convinced that jesus is lord except by the spirit are we together so the holy spirit has a second dimension ministry to unbelievers my interest for our discussion is the third dimension of his ministry he has the third dimension of his ministry to believers hallelujah the holy spirit has a ministry to believers what is his ministry to believers a he has the singular responsibility 
of activating your spiritual organs so that you become alive unto God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot perceive spiritual things. For the Bible says the natural man, listen carefully, that the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. It is Spirit who quickens you so that statements like giving will make sense to you praying in the spirit will make sense to you if you are an unregenerate man and you listen to these conversations and this christian concept they do not make sense to one who has not been quickened by the spirit how do you tell me to scatter so that i will increase how do you tell me to dance my way out of pain and trouble that does not make sense it is the ministry of the holy spirit to quicken you so that you now understand the ways of the spirit if you're with me say amen b his second ministry to believers is to reveal the word of god he is responsible for imparting knowledge and understanding in partnership with scripture Without the Holy Spirit, there is no possibility for having accurate knowledge in the scripture. You can search the scripture and you will end up coming up with a compendium of misguided statements laced with a lot of controversies. And you would just open books of the Bible. It will end up making you doubt God without the Holy Spirit. You will see a lot of supposedly disjointed statements that do not make sense. The Bible is more than a book of history. The Bible is more than a piece of literature. The Bible is more than a compendium of archaeology. It must be opened, but the seals must be broken. Are we together? It is your responsibility to open the book. It is his responsibility to unlock the seals. If the seals are not unlocked, you will open the book and simply be reading an instrument of history. Understanding understanding in isaiah chapter 11 when you read from verse 2 it begins to list what we call the sixfold manifestations of the holy spirit number one the spirit of the lord number two the spirit of wisdom and understanding number three the spirit of counsel and might and then the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord and it says verse 3 that he shall make him of quick understanding of quick understanding Elihu said in Job chapter 32 and verse 8 when you read that there is a spirit in man and the inspiration the breath of the Almighty can make men of understanding lay your hands on your head in one minute and I like you to declare in the name of Jesus that from today I am of quick understanding intellectually academically spiritually is someone praying and for those following online lay your hands and make that declaration by the spirit of the living god i am of quick understanding extraordinary supernatural intelligence hallelujah praise the name of the lord see the third ministry of the holy spirit to believers listen carefully is the ministry of empowerment the ministry of empowerment i'll talk a lot more on that if we're not able to cover that this afternoon or this morning we we'll deal with it in the evening empowerment tarry ye until ye be empowered hallelujah when you read Luke chapter 1 please give us verse 34 so the angel Gabriel comes to this young virgin who is a spouse to marry Joseph and he brings her glad tidings of great joy but then a statement that made her afraid that she was going to be with child without the assistance of a man mary replies the angel and she says how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man the answer is in verse 35 hallelujah it says the power the holy ghost shall come upon you next time men say how shall these things be that by the end of this year i will own my own property how shall these things be that in spite of the confusion around my life i will stand tall and stand blessed the next time you do not have an answer you do not know how it will happen i want you to know that there is one who has been assigned how shall these things be that saul becomes paul how shall these things be that Cephas becomes Peter? How shall this thing be that the barren becomes a joyful mother of children? How shall these things be? Leave that to the office of the Holy Spirit. 
next time the devil comes with the voice of doubt and fear listen carefully i like you to give him luke chapter 1 and verse 35 the holy ghost hallelujah shall come upon you man of god how shall it be that you will suddenly become the anointed version of yourself the holy ghost shall come upon you the holy ghost when the holy ghost comes upon men he can turn every desert land did the bible not say in isaiah 32 and verse 15 until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then it says the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that is the assignment of the holy ghost he is able to dry away barrenness dry away lack of results that every time men say where is your god they are simply saying where is the holy ghost where did you leave him We call God Emmanuel, but Jesus said, I am going, but I will not leave you comfortless. There is one who will come and continue my ministry. He shall be in you and with you. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. This I believe. This I believe that the Holy Ghost can trans listen everywhere you see an extraordinary manifestation of the glory of God everywhere you see men and women who is as though they are no longer human it looks like a transition has happened to them I am telling you that the force behind every exploit in the kingdom that invisible force is the Holy Spirit he's the one who turned a timid person who ran away these disciples ran away but when the Holy Ghost came upon them let's finish that scripture how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man Luke chapter 1 and verse 35 Gabriel replies and he says that the Holy Ghost Luke 1 35 shall come upon you give us that scripture please it says and the power of the highest shall overshadow you the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. That's our prayer this morning. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill, Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run. Can I tell you? You can fail alone, but when the Holy Ghost holds your hand, regardless the background, the man speaking to you is a living testimony that when the Holy Ghost holds your hand, he will turn you into a sign and a wonder, regardless what the limitations are. I came this morning to prophesy over someone. The devil has spoken over your life and made you believe that you will remain a failure. But I bring you good news. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. And that happens by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit walking with men turning ordinary men to become signs and wonders you are a man of God here listen to me it will take more than the exegesis of men's philosophies to transform he is the invisible the invisible force behind our speakings the Bible says on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came upon the disciples who would now be called Apostles they looked at them and said, they said, these men were drunk with new wine. And Peter said, you are making a mistake. This is that. Prophet Joel prophesied about it. And he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. When he was done speaking by the Holy Ghost, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He said, believe. And thou shalt receive this gift for the promise is unto you and to your children, to your children's children, as many as the Lord will call. 
we read about men and women in history as weak and frail as they were but they submitted themselves to this paraclet the spirit of god right here in your nation is an archive of men and women ordinary people who believe the holy ghost enough and he turned them into global wonders our father in the lord is a testament of what god can do with a man to pick a man from your lowly estate listen you do not laugh at any man who has held on to the hand of the holy spirit because you will bury your head in shame forever the holy ghost is an expert in turning chaos believe me this is beyond motivation i am not teaching you cunningly devised fables that if you submit yourself to the ministry of the holy spirit regardless the failures past he will so elevate you you will need a telescope to look at your former self you will not find that fashion again someone shout holy spirit one more time say holy spirit for the last time say holy spirit This is the path that leads men to glory. Ordinary men lifted by the Spirit. Ordinary men helped by the Spirit. Ordinary men empowered by the Spirit. They looked at Elihu and said, you are such a young man. From whence did you have this intelligence? He said, I wanted to speak, but because I was surrounded by elderly people, I couldn't speak. But there is a Spirit in man. There is a Spirit in man. There is a Spirit in man. And the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty can make men of understanding. I prophesy to you that from today, your life becomes a sign and a wonder. Please be seated. Please be seated. The Spirit of the Living God. You can fail alone but not with him many of you have failed because you are doing business alone many of you have failed because you are schooling alone many of you have failed because you are running your home alone the Bible says with God with God means involving him and allowing him to take the lead all things all things are possible all things are possible you can fail alone but I assure you you cannot fail with him America listen to me the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 trust in the Lord with all your heart it says and lean not on to your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the Lord and turn away from evil I believe in the power of the mind I believe in intellectual prowess what can I tell you when we become a generation that over depends on our mind as against the leadership of the Holy Spirit we will only schedule ourselves for circles of pain and disappointment I hope you know that before time began he was he has lived with men the Holy Spirit is not an apprentice as far as making men great is concerned read your Bible and watch the ordinary men who yielded themselves to him and watch what he turned their lives to become the Holy Spirit can we continue the second ministry that we must submit ourselves to is the ministry of the word the ministry of the word in John chapter 1 from verse 1 the Bible says in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and it says the word was God verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 says all things were made I like this scripture all things say all things that includes your finances say all things that includes your job all things were made by him and without him meaning outside of the influence of the word was not anything made that was made I like that outside of the word was not anything made that was made the Word of God is a maker Colossians 1 and verse 16 let me show you the excellency of the word Colossians 1 and verse 16 please write and then look up when it's projected Colossians 1 and verse 16 for by him the him being the Word of God all things 
created that are in heaven that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones whether they be dominions whether they be principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him the word of god listen the word of god reveals to us the ways of god if you're writing please write that down the word of god reveals to us the ways of god when you give diligence to the study of scripture you learn the ways of god the modus operandi of the kingdom hallelujah you learn the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching and he said because it has been given unto you america to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the kingdom operates by laws and by principles are we together and the principles of the kingdom are captured in scripture oftentimes you would see jesus use stories and parables to show us the principles of the kingdom and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation am i right on that when you submit yourself to scripture it will turn you in partnership with the ministry of the holy spirit to a sign and a wonder listen to me in this kingdom the manifestation of eternal life is knowledge dependent please listen the manifestation of eternal life is knowledge dependent now you can buy me the latest iphone say imagine that i received a gift from you you bought me the latest iphone now how many of you know that that gadget has a lot of abilities there are many things it's able to do are we together but whether or not i am able to operate it effectively depends on my knowledge you will be surprised that in the presence of such a sophisticated gadget the only thing i might use it for is to make calls i am underutilizing potential that is in that gadget so there are many people who are not able to manifest the fullness of the life that they have received and it is simply because we are bankrupt of the requisite level of spiritual knowledge say knowledge please shout it say knowledge let the devil hear you say knowledge this kingdom is knowledge dependent ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds so when you live in ignorance you will be shortchanged and never be able to manifest the reality of that life you have received ignorance ignorance many believers are ignorant as to the ways of god and for a few believers like you may have heard me say in my teachings we have little knowledge but it is not sufficient to command the kind of results that we desire now please look at me i presume that many of us here um you know have passed through the educational system that we have here how many of you know that there is a great system in every college am i right on that at least we know that it ranges between a for distinction and f for fail am i right on that now when a student scores f it doesn't mean the student scored zero it just means it means that he did not pass enough are we together now the student who did not write the exams and the student who scored 10 percent and the student who scored 35 percent they all got f can you imagine that so do not say i know something there is a requisite level of knowledge that is connected to every manifestation of glory so first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 leaves us with a caution and an instruction he says if any man thinks that he knows anything he says let that man know that he knoweth nothing as he ought to know as he ought to know 
I know something little about prosperity. I know something little about divine health. I know something little about influence. I know something little about prayer. I know something little about victory. That will only leave you a frustrated Christian. You must contend for high level spiritual illumination. My Bible says, John 1 and verse 5, it says, The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. If this entire beautiful auditorium were completely dark and you put on the light from your phone, I hope you know that is light, but not light enough to turn this place into day. For many of you, the reason why there still lingers around your life the dominion of darkness is that your light is not bright enough. You need to settle down and contend for knowledge. Knowledge. What does it take to prosper? What does it take to be lifted? What does it take to be favored? Do not say the nation and the gates of America isn't treating me well. No, no, no. You define your possibilities based on the truths that you know. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land and received in that same land a hundredfold. And the man began to prosper. He went forward to the extent that the Philistines envied him. But apostle, I'm in a strange land. I am in a foreign land. Go and read about Joseph, one who went into Egypt as a prisoner. But on the strength of what he knew, he rose until he became the prime minister. Go and read about Daniel, who reigned and excelled through the dispensation of three or four kings. Regardless the policies, he rose above them. There is a factor that lifts men above systems and structures. It's called favor. So my charge for you is you need to contend for higher levels of the word. 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 The study of one verse per day will not empower you to reign. You need high level spiritual illumination. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, shine, for your light is come. Please say it after me. Arise. You are speaking to your destiny say arise say shine one more time say arise say shine call your name joshua selman arise shine arise shine arise shine but it says for your light is come you do not arise because you are tired of the ground you do not arise because you've been there a long time even if you've been there for 38 years, sympathy will not take you up. It takes light. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. That's our prayer this morning. Will you open my eyes, let me see. You're the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Hallelujah. Knowledge is powerful. Ignorance is connected to fear. Will always fear what you do not understand. You will always fear what you do not understand. Dominion in this kingdom. Is a product of your comprehension of the Word of God dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon high-level spiritual illumination the Lord is speaking to someone this morning submit yourself to the ministry of the word submit yourself to the ministry of the word there are so many people who are looking for anointing and power and that is wonderful but you see the value of the anointing is that it comes upon a vessel that is filled with the word if the word of god if you are not full of the word you will shortchange the potential of the anointing are we together the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel if the vessel is small the oil will look small so the prophet said the problem is not the oil go and borrow vessels expand your understanding it says borrow not a few What do you know about favor? What do you know about speed? What do you know about restoration? What do you know about Jesus? 
what do you know about satan what do you know about failure what do you know about success what do you know about lifting my goodness what do you know about victory you must become a student of scripture the difference between a fresh graduate from a medical school and a consultant is knowledge and experience while the former even though a doctor might be confused over certain cases they would need to refer that case to a consultant and with mastery and confidence he can look at you and say i know what is wrong with you and begin to write you a prescription without fear knowledge gives you confidence the bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times isaiah 60 and verse 1 the amplified rendition says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light can i tell you the knowledge of the word is an equalizer it brings every destiny to have the same access to greatness regardless your limitations you may not have the leverage of a wealthy family to start with you may not have the leverage of time perhaps you began to pursue destiny late i have hope for you i have a word of hope once you can lean to the word of god it will elevate you as though you are in a lift and it will lift you in no time to rise to a position of greatness this i know this i believe i believe the word of god i commend you to god and to the word of his grace again let me repeat that the word of god reveals the ways of god captured in the word of god is the modus operandi of the kingdom it helps you understand how the kingdom functions hallelujah an attack on your word study life is an attack on your destiny please write this very quickly let me give you a threefold approach to maximizing the word of god let me give you am i wasting your time this morning a threefold approach to maximizing the word of god number one the first thing you do with the word of god is to study it the first thing you do with the word of god in order to be a manifestation of the glory of god is to study the word of god this is very important study the word of god study the word of god it says study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word study study it's a product of your mind you will have to sit down and invest through discipline and responsibility are we together study the word of god get materials that can help you it says buy the truth and sell it not there are many currencies that you can use to buy the truth number one the currency of hunger number two the currency of humility number three the currency of diligence these are all currencies with which you will use to buy the truth buy the truth it says and sell it not so you study the word number two what do you do with the word in order to maximize the ministry of the word listen to the word the hearing that produces faith please write this is a training this morning you don't just study the word you hear the word you hear the word and god said and god said as soon as adam in genesis 1 26 to 28 as soon as adam was formed the first thing he heard was the voice of god and god blessed him saying 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 it matters what you hear the bible says and the lord was walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where art thou and adam replied him now in a fallen state i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked here was a question who told you you've opened your ears to another influence your life has now begun to move in the direction of another influence outside of my voice you must be careful what you hear because what you hear has the power to channel the course of your destiny what you hear 
even the dry bones in Ezekiel 37 they became an exceeding great army because of the power of sound I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound let me speak over someone whatever has made your ears to be dull of hearing spiritually in the name of Jesus Christ let that ear be open now the Bible says he that hath an ear that means not everybody has that kind of ear he was speaking to people who were alive there is a kind of ear that needs to be open and that happens when you hear scripture in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to someone deaf ears be open now so you study the Word of God and you hear the Word of God now please sit down psychologists agree even with religion on this that your life will revolve around and towards your most dominant thoughts am i right on that this is true this is this has been intellectually established and confirmed that what becomes your dominant thoughts your, the possibilities in your life will be an eventual reflection of the content in your mind that is true many of us occupy ourselves with all kinds of negative information antiquized information and then you find out that your life begins to revolve and it moves around a trajectory that you do not want you have a responsibility to buy the truth listen to teachings listen to scripture today's world provides us on advantage as far as the scripture is concerned all you need to go is to go online and you will find bibles audio bibles and all kinds of there in fact you even have the words of jesus that has been singled out that you listen again and again and again and again and again because faith bible faith comes by hearing and the hearing that produces understanding there are two kinds of hearing the first produces awareness the second produces understanding so you study the scripture you hear the scripture are you ready for the third dimension you speak the scripture this is powerful the bible says let the redeemed of the lord help me say so not wish so not just think so let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the victorious of the lord say so let the triumphant in destiny say so say so that i am the head and not the tail say so that the favor of god is around me as a shield say so that a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes will i see and behold the reward of the wicked say so that my life is beulah and hefzibah say so that the favor of god is upon my life say so that i rise and shine for my light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon me say so that the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the Lord is the strength of my life say so that they may come against me one way and scatter in seven ways so that I shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon me and overtake me say so that in the name of Jesus I am like a, a, a tree that brings his fruit in season whose leaf does not wither and everything I do prospers say so i'm speaking about myself i don't know about you but that in the name of jesus christ no weapon fashioned against me will prosper and that every tongue that rises up against me will fall in judgment say so i am the head and not the tail above and not beneath say so let the redeemed of the lord please listen to me do not trivialize the power of speaking the word. Do not trivialize the power of speaking the word. The word is so powerful, God calls himself the word. He doesn't call himself prayer. He doesn't call himself fasting. He calls himself the word. Hallelujah. Write 
from my lowly estate I began to speak the Word of God that the gates of the nations are open for me and there is no limitation whatsoever in the name of Jesus Christ it says let the redeemed of the Lord say so where the word of a king is did your Bible not say there is power is it true according to revelations 5 and 10 that we have been made unto our god kings and priests and that we reign on earth how do you reign kings reign by their words it says declare ye that thou mightest be justified see the character of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a state of silence do you know that when a man is depressed satan is after your words because if he can manipulate you to get to a point of silence then he can destroy your life i refuse to be silent i refuse to be silent my bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous someone in one minute hold hands with someone by your left and begin to make any decree of scripture you can remember in the name of jesus i am blessed in the city blessed in the country put this to work dear people in the mighty name of jesus christ the hand of the lord is upon my life i am a well watered garden when men say there is a casting down i decree and declare that there is a lifting up i go from strength to strength i go from grace to grace in mighty name of Jesus Christ I go from strength to strength someone pray I go from grace to grace the favor of the Lord is upon me I arise and I shine in the name of Jesus Christ exalted in every nation finding favor in every nation blessed highly favored Go ahead and declare. Go ahead and declare. You're not wasting your time. Give your destiny the gift of a few minutes of prophetic speaking. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Someone prophesy. Don't be silent. I prophesy as I was commanded. Speak to those bills. Speak to that health situation. In the name of Jesus, you are out of my life and out of my destiny casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ the gates of America open for you open for your children someone declare in the name of Jesus favor in the city favor in the country by the power of the Holy Spirit favor in texas by the power of the holy spirit the lines are falling for me in pleasant places i have a goodly heritage in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord now listen to me when you learn to study the word when you learn to hear the word when you learn to speak the word that is a miracle on his way to manifest that is a sign and a wonder on his way to manifest the ministry of the holy spirit guiding you helping you in addition to the ministry of the word diligent study listening to the word programming your destiny by the word and now making faith-filled declarations can i give you two more please be seated someone's life is changing already my assignment is to make you angry at your current level in the name of Jesus Christ the Word of God number three the ministry of prayer this is how we evolve into signs and wonders the ministry of prayer hallelujah there's no time i have to work with the time allotted but according to scripture please look up prayer has four major assignments in the life of the believer please write this and never forget it for as long as you live prayer 
has four assignments first and foremost do you believe in prayer so that i know that i'm talking to a people who are believers in the ministry of prayer let me give you three scriptures that help to settle your passion for prayer number one is found in luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint men ought always to pray and not to faint second scripture first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 the bible says pray without ceasing pray without ceasing meaning be consistent in your prayer life james chapter 5 and verse 13 the bible says is any man afflicted he said let him pray is any man afflicted let him pray when you read from verse 16 down to 18 the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much are we together jesus was speaking and he said he that told you have not asked for anything he says ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be complete in mark chapter 11 when you read from verse 24 jesus was teaching on faith and then he introduces the ministry of prayer he says verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it hallelujah prayer is very powerful is one of the foundational principles for the manifestation of victory and glory in the life of the believer but for the sake of our discussion this morning let me give you four assignments of prayer in the life of the believer number one the first and most superior assignment of prayer in order of priority is for your growth and transformation write that down please most believers do not know that other dimensions of prayer are lesser dimensions relative to this the primary assignment of prayer is as an agency for your growth and for your transformation we find that in luke chapter 9 please give us verse 29 jesus is in gethsemane and he's praying the bible says and as he prayed or the mount of transfiguration as he prayed not before he prayed not while he was wishing to pray as he prayed two things happened number one the fashion of his countenance was altered number two his raiment became white and glistering say transformation prayer can change you from a weak you to a strong you prayer can change you from a timid you to a powerful you Prayer can change you from a flesh-driven you to a spiritual you. Prayer, if done properly, is powerful. The first assignment of prayer is as an instrument of growth and transformation. Jesus, teaching the church in Corinth on prayer, has this to say. He says in 1 Corinthians, when you read from... 14 and verse 2 then 4 it says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself edified himself jude 1 and then verse 20 it says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying praying building up yourselves praying an attack on your prayer life is a real attack so the first assignment of prayer very quickly is for your growth and your transformation can i give you the second very quickly the second assignment of prayer is for making requests and obtaining requests and making petitions write that down obtaining requests and making petitions the biblical platform to call for the assistance of heaven at any given point is to engage through prayer making requests and obtaining petitions the bible says in mark 11 and verse 24 we read that it says whatsoever things ye desire when you desire do not wish when you desire do not hope in vain the bible says pray 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 
Jesus was teaching us in what we call the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. It says, pray after this manner, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Are we together? Then it says, give us this day. How do you ask for your daily bread? In prayer, not by wishing. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. What is your daily bread? That which is required for your sufficiency. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the second assignment of prayer. To obtain requests and to make petitions. Number three. The third assignment of prayer is for creation and spiritual legislation. This is the prophetic dimension of prayer. For creation. You create your realities. You create your destiny. Are we together and you legislate as a king and as a believer that you are for creation and spiritual legislation the bible says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power very very important where the word of a king is there is power declare ye that thou mightest be justified you can create possibilities like we did earlier on in the place of prayer in the name of jesus christ doors are opening for me i decree and declare the bible says even god who quickened the dead and called the things that be not as though they were is that in your bible so you can use prayer as a platform to call things program realities in your life for instance you can tell yourself every day of this year favor follows me you are scheduling a season hallelujah and then number four the fourth assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for warfare and intercession warfare and intercession warfare and intercession warfare and intercession ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 ezekiel 22 and verse 30 please give it to us if ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 the bible says and i sought for a man who would stand in the hedge do we have that ezekiel 22 22 2 2 and then 3 0 ezekiel 22 and verse 30 i sought for a man who would stand in the hedge that i should not destroy it and i found none prayer is a platform for intercession are we together now that you can be here right now and you can be interceding for your son somewhere and by the power of prayer even intercessory prayer the spirit of god can go and fish that son from wherever he is and cause him to encounter jesus and to return home like a prodigal hallelujah and then warfare listen the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that our world is surrounded by all kinds of evil and wicked forces scripture is very clear as to the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places the bible says the whole world lies in wickedness he said i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us you can pray every kind of negative climate out of your life you can engage in the place of warfare establishing the victory that has been wrought in christ making it manifest here and now here and now here and now you must learn to pray listen to me satan is not going to fold his arms and allow the gate of your destiny to be open no not without warfare warfare is establishing the victory that is in christ experientially warding of all the spiritual limitations that stand to impede your destiny i made up my mind that in my lifetime no devil no demon will stand away to my manifesting the glory of god for as long as i have the power to pray i will pray failure out of my life i will pray weakness out of my life war betides the spirit that is sent to block my way because by the power of prayer you can tell every mountain be lifted 
Hallelujah. You can take the time to intercede. You can take the time to engage in warfare. Believe us, I bring you a word. If you will be powerful, even in America, you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer. Occasional prayer does not produce a powerful believer. Your prayer must be systemic and it must be consistent. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were going to the temple to pray. The Bible says at the hour of prayer. Say after me, the hour of prayer. You must create through discipline and responsibility your version of the hour of prayer. Do not allow your job to be an excuse for prayerlessness. I said it yesterday that prayerlessness is pride. Prayerlessness is proof that you do not need the assistance of the government of heaven. And the Bible says, by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Say, I will pray. Prophesy to yourself, say, I will pray. Say it again, I will pray. Say, I will pray in the name of Jesus Christ. So obtain grace to pray. Fathers in America, pray. Mothers in America, pray. Young people in America, pray. Students, pray. Businessmen, pray. Don't just leave it for men of God. Prayer is for all men. Prayer is for all men. Wake up in the morning and begin to pray. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I'm glad. In the office, pray while you're working. Pray. The first response to anything that is antichrist in your life and anti-prophecy is to pray even if you do not know what to do you were laid off or fired before you start ranting and complaining pray in the place of prayer direction will come the bible says and as they prayed and fasted the holy ghost said to them separate me paul and barnabas direction comes in the place of prayer lord should i remain in this city or relocate to another side of america don't assume there is a way that seemeth right unto a man let your decisions pass through that immigration system of prayer so that only that which is consistent with the will of god is allowed to find expression pray before you send your children to school Pray before you decide the college to study. Pray before you decide where to stay. Don't assume the flesh can deceive. Pray. For someone, God may tell him, go right. But for you, God will say, stay in Egypt and sow in Egypt. And the Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. Businessmen, pray. Don't just say, this is making money. No, pray. Because as you will be learning in my later session, it is what is upon your head that governs what is in your cup. Thou anointest my head with oil. He does not anoint your cup. Your cup is a report card. It tells us what is on your head. When your cup is empty, don't blame the job. When your cup is empty, don't blame Texas. They are reflections of the bankruptcy of empowerment. That is why I know that tonight, in the name of Jesus, as that grace comes on someone, your cup will begin to run over. Run over. Run over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you the last and then we'll pray. So I've spoken about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Guiding, leading, empowering you. The ministry of the word. Helping you to comprehend the ways of God. And that in engaging the word, we study, we listen, we speak. Now prayer. Sponsoring your transformation as you engage it. Especially praying in the spirit. Helping you to obtain requests and to make petitions. An instrument of creation. Engaging the prophetic dimension of prayer. And then finally as an instrument for warfare and intercession warding of all the demonic arsenals that are sent to stand the way of your destiny the last key that i will give you is the corporate fellowship of the brethren all of this that i mentioned you will find it in acts chapter 2 and verse 42 when you read down to 47 this was the culture of the early church the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in breaking of bread like we experienced yesterday and in fellowship and in prayer and in prayer. 
this was the protocol the pathway that the early church followed to be mighty men and women hallelujah listen to me the corporate gathering of believers is very important for your holistic spiritual growth there are dimensions of god you will never experience in isolation you would have to be part of a larger community of believers please listen to me listen to me the bible says in psalm 133 it says how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it says it is like the oil that comes from the head of aaron watch this i will always give this example so you are in the bathroom about to shower watch this did you know that your legs do not have to go above your head to experience that process of the shower it just needs to be connected to the body am i right on that the part that faces the shower is your head yet every part of your body including your feet benefits because of its connection if your legs are away from your body that part of your body will not experience that shower so you do not need to keep turning around or lifting your legs no 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 all you need to do is to make sure every part of your body stands as one and that shower gets to every part of your body believers when when you watch someone about to cook i know a lot of you do barbecues outside and then you use charcoal and all of that now watch this how many of you know that if you pick one red hot coal and you bring it out and drop it it begins to grow cold am i right on that it is in the togetherness that that strength and fire remains so when the devil wants to destroy a believer he uses offense he uses all kinds of things to isolate you away from the larger body of believers now let me tell you this when satan wants to destroy you he will make sure that everyone who can help you spiritually and otherwise he will create a reason to be offended in them when you are now alone then he strikes you because war be betides that man who is alone he says two are better than one if one falls there will be another to lift him up there are believers who do not care about church there are believers who do not care about the things of god thank god for the internet but can i tell you the larger body of believers you must practice habitually the convergence of believers everywhere your parish is represented you owe it as a duty for your own spiritual growth to make sure you are connected practically to a body of believers they return to their company the bible will say community living community keep living is the key to sustaining kingdom values in isolation you may not have the courage to do some things to say no to evil but as a team you can say no together are we together it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me i need you to survive i pray for you you pray for me i love you i need you to survive listen there are times you come to church discouraged and from the first song of worship while everybody is smiling and still greeting you are crying because that's the answer to your prayer that only happens in church the church of the lord jesus christ is not a cinema hall the church of the lord jesus christ is not a museum to come and spectate it is the place where god has chosen to make us his habitation can i tell you the church every church may have issues here and there but you must look past every limitation and see jesus when you look for jesus you will always find him in every true church finding perfection as a requirement to be a faithful member of any congregation will only leave you deceived and eventually in pain look beyond the limitations and you will see jesus jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher 
Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, oh I'm about to round up. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know? when you come to god please listen carefully when you begin your work with god purpose and your assignment is not your priority at that point god does not call men and say come and go and be this no when god calls you he calls you to himself he does not call you to an agenda follow me not follow it when i make you i can send you there are many people who are following it that's why they do not find jesus follow me as you follow me you will begin to find your place in me colossians chapter 4 and verse 17 it says say unto archippus take heed to the ministry that thou hast received in the lord not from the lord to receive in the Lord means you have to be in relationship with the Lord. You can receive from me without contact with me. But you cannot receive in me. Carry your food in the kitchen. That means you have to enter the kitchen to pick it. But carry your food from the kitchen. Someone can help you. God is not just looking for accomplishments. He's looking for relationships. Follow me. I know eventually you will be a prophet, but start by following me. I know eventually you will be an entrepreneur, but start by following me. You do not follow it, you follow me. As you follow him looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, you begin to evolve. And as you follow him, he will now diverge you to the geography of your witness. It is in following him that you begin to know in him that you were meant to be a prophet now look up every name you see in the bible is not just the name of a believer every name you see in the bible is also a spiritual pathway that when you follow you will become a certain kind of believer so when you see abraham abraham is not just the name of a man abraham is a capture of a journey that you can follow God in a certain way and become the father of nations. Elijah is not just a prophet. Elijah represents a spiritual pathway that when you follow, you can become a mighty prophet over nations. Esther is not just the name of a woman. Esther is a definition of a kind of call and assignment that requires you interacting with royalty to preserve the purposes of God. That means as you begin to walk with God, eventually there is a name in the Bible that starts reflecting to your life and destiny. That is the pathway a mark for you to follow. Listen carefully. There are many of you as you begin to walk with God, you see your life looking like Esther and you know that that is the formation of your destiny. You discover your destiny as you follow him. You don't just invent and say, I can talk well. I think I'm a preacher. No. Is someone learning yes. so as you walk with God you will find out that your life is looking like Joseph apostle I love the Lord with all my heart but even those who are close to me are betraying me and I keep moving from city to city does that look like the young boy who had a dream seeing the Sun the moon and 11 stars bowing you can find the parallel of your destiny in scripture hidden in the names of men that you call peter that you call andrew i used to hate church i used to hate the things of god you may say i used to hate anything spiritual does that sound to me like paul who later became the great apostle now that you are saved no wonder your passion seems to be greater than everyone at the end of your life your name should not just be a description of you your name should have been a pathway that you live for generations that when they want to learn god in a certain way when they say joshua selman 
you see so you can say the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob these are spiritual pathways to learning god what pathway is your name creating for the death the generations to come there are names you do not want to be associated with for instance jezebel because jezebel is also a pathway for instance delilah why they represent pathways of seduction destruction sin and hell and death can we pray for a few minutes as we wrap up this morning please rise hallelujah we are going to pray no don't stop I just meant take it higher for me oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crown and worship you oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crowns and worship you oh glorious god we praise your name we lay our crowns and worship Let's sing together. Oh, glorious God, say. Oh, glorious God. We praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you. Hear me, America. For every one of us who is standing here under the sound of my voice, and the many who are following by way of television or internet i want you to know that god is counting on you it is not just emmanuel god with you but that you become a reflection of his glory not everyone had to climb the mountain to see god one man called moses went up and saw the glory of god and it lit upon his face such that every other person who saw him also saw God through him listen carefully there are many 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 people who are depending on the revelation of God through your life to them the Bible calls us living epistles that your life becomes a Bible someone may not buy this but they can watch this and see the excellency of the glory of God in and through your life I do not know what may be going wrong in your life right now for many you are yet to even make Jesus Lord of your life in the first place for others you are genuinely saved but you have not been intentional about your growth I have shown you by the Spirit a roadmap the ministry of the Holy Spirit the ministry of the Word the ministry of prayer the corporate gathering of believers these are the elements that produce mighty men in this kingdom there is no other way it is an ancient part it is a landmark that should not be shifted there is no other way to becoming powerful there is no other way to becoming mighty ordinary men subscribe to this and as frail as they were they began to evolve to higher versions even the versions that became a revelation of the glory of God I'm going to ask you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life and we're done as far as my session is concerned I do not know how far you desire to rise in God I do not know how far you desire the nations to see him revealed through your life but there's a song that always inspires me can you take it up a key or two higher for me hallelujah as can now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart 
distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us that's the part i like distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us that someone will see the effulgence of god's glory upon your life and say i used to know this man i used to know this lady what happened to you look at the excellency of the glory of god revealed revealed by the power of the holy spirit revealed in and through your life i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and pray lord let my life be a revelation of your glory let my life be a revelation of your glory a revelation of emmanuel in the name of jesus the son of the living god lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart is someone praying i desire that my life reveal your glory your power your wisdom the excellence of your kingdom someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart all that it would take for me to submit to the ministry of the holy spirit the word of god the ministry of prayer the corporate gathering of believers i obtain grace to be disciplined and to be intentional beginning from today by the power of the holy ghost dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.